This is the Pass the Game Challenge. Six developers build an entire video game, the catch being that no communication between them is allowed. Each dev has four hours to work on the project and passes it on to the next creator. In the two previous episodes, we made a machine building survival game and a godlike simulator. What will we make in this third edition? It was an absolutely wild ride and perhaps one of the most ambitious games to have come out from one of these challenges yet. So I was once again the first developer to kickstart this brand new journey. The first decision that I made was to make a 3D game instead of a 2D one. It's been a couple of years since I last dipped my toes in 3D and I was eager to get outside my comfort zone. I really dislike the default 3D scene. So first thing I did was to add a more stylish skybox. Then I began sculpting some terrain, adding hills and mountains to my world. We also have a little first person character that can walk around the environment. It's around this point that I realized the terrain needed a lot more work. It was just covered in a monotone grass texture, so I painted in more details, from dirt to shiny mountain rocks. I also added post-processing, which enhances colors, adds more contrast, and really makes shadows pop. So I'd built a tiny world that you could walk around, but I still had a solid hour left, so I created some simple resources that can be mined, which hopefully gives future devs a more clear direction on what to make next. You can also build trees and tiny houses, but these do absolutely nothing so far. Part of the fun of this challenge is just making things, leaving them lying around, and hoping this will spark creativity in other devs. Replica helped us bring this project to life by sponsoring this video. This is a unique tool that creates AI voice actors for games. For example, I could head over to their Discord server, type the say command, type whatever I like in here, and choose a unique character to narrate it. We fought that we lost. But we live to stand another day. You could also summon characters by giving them a name and brief description. And Replica will then generate a character portrait and an AI with a unique personality that you can even have a conversation with. You will not succeed. I am too powerful. You're wrong. Link to the Replica Discord server is in the description. I'm now passing on the project to Lana. I'm Lana Lux, I'm a game dev and Twitch streamer. We are off to a great start and there's lots of cool things we could add. The game seemed to be a sort of survival type game where you can break apart different elements to collect and you can place items, but the items were a tree and a building. So it was almost like more of a city building mixed with a survival style game. At least that's what I got out of it. I didn't see any obstacles or goals yet, so I decided to get started on that. The obstacle would be our little enemy characters and our goal would be to research a way to stop them attacking our village. The more homes we have, the faster research goes up. However, the enemies come and try to attack those homes and tear them down. I also added a wall to stop the enemy from getting to the homes and a tower building with the intention of it attacking back, but I didn't get the chance to put that part in. Hopefully the next devs will understand the purpose of it. I added art for the enemy, for the new buildings, and I added some art for the rocks. And for the blood, I thought it was like a gem at first, so I made a gem for it, and then I realized it's blood, so we'll see what happens with that. Boom. Oh, 3D. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Okay. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Okay, hold on. So this is something. Boom. Okay. Are they am I, are they enemies or no? Wait. Are they builders? Okay, they're enemies. Okay, damn. Okay. <laughs> there isn't much to go on, but after playing around with the game for a while, my conclusion was that you are supposed to build a house and protect it from villagers until this timer runs out. However, I couldn't find a way to rotate the walls, which made it a little difficult to wall in the house, and I decided to fix that first. So by changing the code slightly, the wall is now always facing the player, making it a bit easier to construct your fortress. I should add, I haven't opened Unity for almost two years, so hopefully I won't break the whole project and turn this challenge into a fix Ponty's mistakes challenge. Next up, I found the interface mildly confusing. Uh, all the icons depict trees but they actually make different things so I made my best attempt at creating some art in the famous blackthorn style. I don't know how successful that attempt was but uh, time is ticking and we better move on. It does the job I think though. I found these minerals lying around and it looks like you can actually pick some up. However, all the buildings are currently free of charge so I think it would be good to fix that. 
I spent probably a bit too much time on this, but I created a currency system so that structures now actually cost resources to build, forcing you to first harvest before you can actually start building your base. The tower you can build has this ominous looking crystal at the top, and I thought it could be fun if the tower fires magic crystals at nearby pillagers. I'm very rusty when it comes to C sharp. <laughs> But after a lot of trial and error with this, I finally figured out how to shoot some simple projectiles at enemies within a certain distance. Now, the only problem is that the tower starts firing even before you place it down on the ground, so you can just run around and shoot all the pillagers with a single tower before the game even starts, but I'll let someone else down the line deal with that. <laughs> That's it! Four hours is not a lot of time to do this stuff, but hey, we did I, we did something and I didn't break the whole thing, which I'm very happy with. Yeah, anyways, thanks so much for inviting me. It was really fun and good luck to the next participant. And don't forget to head over to Ponty Pants and subscribe for that sweet algorithm juice. Okay, okay, we are already halfway through the project. There's only three developers left, and the question is, will they be able to bring this world to life, or will it just end up a confusing mess? There's so much potential here, so let's pass the game on to Liam and hope he doesn't mess it all up. Hey, I'm Liam from Blackthorn Prods. So I received the game and there was already some pretty cool stuff going on. I figured it was a sort of survival tower defense game where you had to survive in this dangerous world and complete some research. After playtesting for a couple of minutes, there were a couple of things that stood out to me that needed to be fixed. First of all, when there were no buildings constructed, the enemies would just stand idle. So I made it so that they followed the player instead and tried to attack him. They also randomly stop attacking the player and decide to go and attack a building instead. Next, when the enemies destroyed a building, they would do this cool celebration animation, but the problem is that they would do it forever, so I made it so that they stop celebrating and go back to work, either attacking the player or attacking another building. I then added this sword attack animation. I also implemented a little damage system so that you can now kill enemies and enemies can also give you damage. The enemy spawner system was a little bit broken, so I added these enemy huts that would spawn enemies and the game would continuously get harder and harder. Next off, I made it so that resources also spawn in the game. I then took some time balancing the game, so I modified the cost of all the buildings, and I also made the game goal a little bit clearer by adding this text UI to the research bar, as well as this feedback to the building suggesting that it is this building here that is giving you research. Oh, and I also skilled up the enemy, making a giant enemy, create some more variations in the enemies, and I think it looks pretty cool. And there we go, those are my additions to the project. I'm really happy with them and I'm now going to give the project to Tarot Dev. Follow me on my descent into madness. I started out with three main goals. Jazz up the wind condition, make the blood resource special and inject a healthy dose of fun. So I started right away by making small tweaks to the movement controller. This tightens up the control and adds the ability to dash, which we're going to need by the time I'm done with this game. I think the resource farming can be improved by replacing blood diamonds with these cuties, which are already full of blood but I still need a way to extract it from them. More on that later. For now, I thought it would be fun to launch objects into the air and juggle them around. And by objects, I mean these walking blood bags. Failing to juggle them, waste all their precious juices on the ground. Ramped up the projectile visuals a little bit. I made left click contextual. Mine resources if you're close, otherwise shoot your projectile. This allowed me to keep dash on right click, which I think feels lovely. The wind condition is a cool idea, but I changed it from a research meter which slowly trickles up to a boss's health bar and created this big sucker. It's impervious to your projectiles, so you need to work out another way to take it down, which brings us back to blood harvesting. Build grinders and juggle these little guys into them, providing you with their red nectar. From there, you can take the blood and fill up these towers, which will fire a titan killing projectile. I had plans for a bit more, such as the boss's death sequence and an end screen which shows the speed at which you managed to kill the titan, but ran out of time. Hope you all enjoyed my little additions, I think it's pretty damn fun to play now, and uh, on to the next dev. Tarot dev out. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Geig, and I'm going to be working on this game next, apparently. So, after playing this game, I got a sense that it was really this sort of Minecraft-style tower defense sort of game. So I figured I'd focus on quality of life changes. And so, the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to add 
a mini map to the game to make it easier to see when enemies were sneaking up on you or, or where everyone was. And I did that by creating a bunch of dummy objects that would sit on the enemies and the player and uh, make them big bright colors and put them on their own layer. Creating a secondary camera called my mini map camera which sat above the battlefield and could only see that layer and then would render everything it saw to a render texture which I put as uh, a UI object you know, in my scenes UIs, voila, minimap. From there, I knew that I wanted to make it easier to gain some blood, so I just quickly added some code that said every time I shot a bad guy, I'd gain five blood. It's not a ton, but it was enough to make, you know, you feel like you were some reason to be shooting these bad guys. And then from there, I wanted to look at the grinder. And with the grinder, I noticed that I kept shooting enemies up in the air, and they would just fall right beside the grinder and nothing would happen. It seemed nearly impossible to get them into the grinder. So I increased the size of the grinder's trigger collider. Now the last thing I knew I was going to have time for was to make this enemy, uh, the, the big titan, uh, spawn in after a period of time. Not start in there. So I just created some simple scripts to, to spawn in our titan after a few moments. So there we go. That was my four hours of development. I didn't get as much done as I would have liked. You know, it took me a lot of time to kind of figure out what was happening, why this script change that and whatever quick tip for anyone curious always put your stuff into source control even if you're just messing around with it locally because uh i often would break things and be like quick revert um super duper helpful thanks for watching and i can't wait to see how this game ends up whoa what a journey liam and i received the game from mike and after being blown away with the progress made we added a little bit of polish fixed one or two tiny bugs and added a timer so the community could try and defeat the monstrous titan in records time okay so we're gonna be playing a game of titan smasher here Liam is the better player, so he's got the controls here, and we're gonna try and beat the Titan yeah. the fastest possible. I can't Liam, too much. I'm gonna be concentrated. I'm gonna start mining these resources right now. I need to get a lot of resources in the beginning because the Titan is not yet there. He's coming in 82 seconds right now. Yes. Uh, it's kind of a speed running game. Got to go the quickest possible. So I'm really gonna try to do the best score for the community right now. 30 <laughs> seconds before doomsday, bro. Some golds right now. Someone's gonna place a nice little thing. Oh, here. he's placing a grinder. He's gonna grind those characters. Ooh, juicy. Yeah. I don't know what Tarot Dev did for that blood effect. It's just absolutely fantastic. The Titan awakes. Great. And so now Liam needs to fill up those towers with blood so that they shoot Titan destroying projectiles. Oh boy. Oh boy. Wow. This is hot. This is hot. Oh, quick. Get out of the way. I'm so stressed right now. Okay. I'm pretty sure we're going to find people who are going to be able to destroy the Titan in like, you know, two minutes. You better move out of the way, man. Oh, he's dodging very narrowly here. Yo, no, 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 no. Oh, that was hot. Bam. All right, you have won. All right, 318 is the record to beat. Let us know in the comments if you can do better, if you can destroy the Titan before uh, three minutes and 18 seconds. I'm sure some of you will be able to do it in two minutes. Uh, so let us know if you do. So you can play Titan Smasher for free on itch.io. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you want to see more. Also let us know in the comments if there are any specific game developers you would like to see take part in this sort of challenge. All right, stay tuned and see you soon. Cheers.